So today's cardinal lesson, we're talking about 2022 tax planning. And we're, so you've seen these numbers before, if you've watched some of my videos, and it's like, why are we talking about these again? Is this stuff and the tax brackets and how they play out in retirement is different than it is when you're working. And people, when they're working, they don't, this doesn't make any sense to them. And when they read about it or they look at it or they're signing their tax return, which you don't even really do anymore because it's filed electronically, it's always looked at historically. And that's why you're not really that interested in it. I mean, it's just they already withheld the tax out of your paycheck. Uh, you paid in quarterlies if you're some type of business and uh, you have other income. And then you file your taxes at the beginning of the next year. You either get money back, you pay money. You, you, you kind of go on. This is just not relevant to, to look at it, maybe from a political standpoint. And I know that because I have a lot of clients coming into me. They couldn't give me a general idea of how much tax they paid, what the percentage was, and nor do they really even care about answering those questions. And when you're in retirement, what's different about it is, is you have some level of control over the income level that you recognize each year. So, you know, in other words, you got a social security check. If you're fortunate enough to have a pension, which a lot of people don't anymore, that's kind of out of your control. So the social security comes in, the pension comes in. But beyond that, what most people live off of to supplement their income is either they're going to live off of retirement savings or like IRA 401k money, and they're going to make withdrawals from that or they're going to make withdrawals from their own savings or investment accounts that they've already paid taxes on and which you don't have to pay taxes they're just pulling your own money out of something so you are effectively in control of how much money you recognize on your tax return in any given year so if if you have those extra accounts so why does that matter well it matters because you can literally choose where you want to fall along this thing. And then you can decide whether you take money out of a already paid the tax money account or a tax free account, or you're going to take money out of the IRA, which you have to pay taxes on, um, or you're going to take nothing out. And some people just say, I can live off of my social security and my pension. That's enough. I'm just going to let all this other stuff sit and accumulate. And many times that's not a smart idea because that's just postponing a problem later, either for your 70, 80, 90 year old self or your spouse or your heirs. Because if you just keep delaying and postponing taxes indefinitely, somebody's going to pay the taxes on that money. And so, knowing what these brackets are and looking forward. And I'm not expecting people to watch my video and then they're going to learn and they're going to walk away and having these numbers memorized or like Tom and I do. And what I'm going to show you is where we get all this bracket stuff. And Tom's going to show you that is it comes from this chart from Ed Slot. I mean, we have a whole lot of charts on that cover all the subjects and this chart is at our website. And the chart is going to show you really um, all of the information that we pulled off of the board and more. And so we're going to take you guys to our website and uh, show you where our show notes are, um, which we're starting to do on our new videos. And so if you go to cardinalguide.com, and you go, this will take you to our website. We're going to click on the seven worry section at the top. And this will talk about the different areas that we discuss on all our videos. So this video is on taxes. So we're going to click on taxes. We're going to then scroll down to the very bottom of the page, which is there's going to be a section called Learning Center. And in that section is the show note for this video. And it's titled 2022 Tax Planning. And so this document is where we get all the things that are on this chart. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. 
And so some of this stuff is on the board, some of it is not. And so we're going to talk through a lot of these different things. And I think to Hans's point is we don't expect you guys to take this video and know how to do all your taxes and know everything about the taxes from here, but just to give you some sense of some of the things you need to think through when we're doing some tax planning. And so up at the top, we have the income tax brackets. These, if you do know anything, these are going to be the ones that you're more familiar with. Um, one thing that I like to point out is that uh, capital gains are taxed differently. And so these are assets held in, in taxable accounts. If, if you have real estate, um, that's not your primary residence. We'll talk about that maybe in another video. But if you say sell real estate, that's a, would be subject to capital gains. Um, selling a business could be capital gains. So anything essentially that you would sell not in, in a retirement account are going to be subject to different tax rates. We do have um, trust tax rates. So we have a lot of clients that have trusts and you can set them up all sorts of different ways, but trust tax rates are much lower. You can see you hit the top of the, the trust tax rate, the 37% rate of your income in the trust is 13,450. Anything above that is taxed at 37% versus if you're filing into a joint tax return, that threshold is 647,000. So much, much higher taxes there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But one thing I want to talk uh, specifically about that's on this chart that's not on the board is around um, the gift taxes or, or estate taxes. And so right now, the estate tax exclusion is twelve million sixty thousand per person, which is very high. I mean, there's a lot of people that are very wealthy that do not hit that number. And so what that means is if you're a state, and this is the federal state tax, some states have their own estate tax, but a federal state tax is not assigned to you or not assessed to your estate unless it's over $12 million. Um, if you're married, each of you can have $12 million. So for a couple, effectively, that's over $24 million you can exclude from the estate tax. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that's tied in with the gift tax. They essentially are the same tax. And so you can use, you can gift money while you're still alive up to that point and still not pay any taxes. And so some people will come in and they'll have heard that you have an annual exclusion for a gift tax of $16,000, meaning I could give $16,000 and not be taxed. And where that is true, that is an exclusion for the gift tax, that doesn't mean you couldn't give more than that. And so if you gave more than the 16,000, all that means is you would have to file a gift tax return for that year. Um, your CPA can help you do that. And you just use up some of this exclusion of the $12 million. And so you could still give up to $12 million and not pay any taxes on it. And you can give more than the 16,000 and avoid that. You just, there's a, an extra step you have to do. Um, one thing where that can come into when you're planning is if you have a very large estate and ultimately your plan is to give this money to your uh, beneficiaries, your children, whoever that might be, one thing that we have some clients doing is giving the money now while they're still alive and the, the gift tax exclusion is so high. And so one thing that we know is going to happen in 2026 is in the current law is the, tra the uh, tax rates are dropping, but so is the estate tax exclusion is dropping down to what it was previously before the tax cuts. And so there's a window of time here where you can give up to $12 million per person, not pay any taxes, use up that exclusion, um, but they're not gonna recapture that. They've already said as much as they're not gonna recapture that when they lower that exclusion back down. So that's just one area that you might consider if you have a very large estate and you're worried about having to pay those those gift tax or estate taxes. And so I'm going to hand the the you know the video back over to Hans. He's going to talk a little bit more about the things on his board, but the where you can find more information than just on the board is at our website under those uh, learning center uh, show notes. So I want to make a comment about what tax rates are doing in 2026. They're not dropping, they're actually increasing. So when this is a result of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, and it's had a little bit of inflation bumps since then, but it's pretty much the same. And it was laid out for eight years. So when they passed tax legislation, and they did it in 2017, they, they laid it out and they only did the budgeting for eight years for the, or the federal budget. So at the end of 2025 or the beginning of 2026, there's called there's a sunset of these provisions. And so these tax rates, 
unless they change the law, which is hard to do, are going to go back and increase. So we can only deal with known stuff. So the beginning in 2026 and after, you're going to have an increase in tax rates. And so, you know, what does that mean to you? Well, it means that a married couple can make up to $340,000 in income and they're only paying 24% taxes on the last dollars or the last half of the dollars. So a 24% tax rate, you know, is tax. But if you compare that to what you were paying on taxes 20 years ago, and I just asked you a question, what do you think tax rates are going to be in the future 10, 20 years from now? I think they're going to be much higher. And so you got an opportunity for 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025 to take advantage of these tax brackets. And how would you do that? You would simply take, if you have an IRA or you have a 401k, you would consider a Roth conversion up to the top of whatever bracket you choose. Some people choose the 178 level is that maybe they have 80,000 or 100,000 in income and they're willing to pay taxes at the 22% rate. My point is, is that when you have money in an IRA and significant money, and you're gonna have to pay taxes on that sooner or later. And if you're able to postpone distributions till you're very old, you're creating a, pro a tax problem either for you or somebody else. And so one way to deal with that is in thought through amounts in amounts that would go right up to the bracket. You do a Roth conversion, which involves paying the taxes now and then making the accounts forever tax free after that. So there, there's a lot of things that we can do with this information and what we know it as we plan forward. So many, many folks that when they do financial plans with us, they have a planned Roth conversion right up to one of these limits. So they're in effect taking advantages because once the year is over with and your income and you didn't do the Roth conversion, you've lost this opportunity. I mean, it's, a, it's like an opportunity cost. So understanding these, and we do quite well, um, you can get the chart. So if you want to do a little of your own sketching out some things, you can get this right off the website as Tom showed you. And those are the married rates. Those are the single rates. Now, I want you to think about something else is if you're a married couple and you're in your 60s or 70s and you're watching these videos and you've been able to postpone or just take the minimum out of your IRA, uh, the minimum distribution, or you plan on doing that, um, you're you're effectively creating a problem for later on. And then one of you is going to die before the other most of the time and it didn't work that way with everyone but somebody passes and then your surviving spouse whether that's you or your spouse the person who lives on and may live on for many years they're going to do it as a single taxpayer so we think about all these things in estate planning because that's just a consideration is is that the tax rates or the brackets for the equivalent percentages are much lower for the surviving spouse or the widow or widower something to think about. The long-term capital gains, I mean, typically, I mean, from the sale of stock, this can be for people that own stock in a, not an IRA account, but just in a regular brokerage account, and then they sell it periodically, they're going to have a capital gain to deal with, but that's still within your control. And for people at a lowish income, they're just living off their social security, just understand that you can sell some of your stock, if you can get up to 83,000 in a year of combining those income and pay 0% taxes on the capital gains. So don't try this at home, but we can plan some of these things. Or when a large, like gentleman that helps us produce in the show, we were just talking about him. So if you have he and his wife in the in, in, somewhere between 100 and 200,000, we'll just say 150,000 of income from their jobs and that's all fine and they're going along and then all of a sudden they sold a piece of commercial property that they made a two hundred thousand dollar gain and they chose to just 
accepted, they paid the 15% level because you took the 150,000 where they paid 22%. And then on the amount of the capital gain, they paid 15%. And so <clears throat> that would be a year that we wouldn't want to do a Roth conversion. Like if we had somebody on a Roth conversion plan, because that would put them down somewhere, somewhere in this department. So if we can anticipate money that's coming in, we use these numbers and these statistics to just lay out a multi-year plan uh, for your income. I also want to just mention the standard deduction because people that do their own taxes, they're now aware of this because they've been doing it for three or four years. But people that send their taxes to an advisor, a lot of them don't know how large the married filing jointly, it's, it's almost $26,000. And then if you're 65 or over, you get another $1,700 each. So it gets up around $28,000, $29,000. And the effect of that is you don't list any tax deductions. You just simply put that down so you don't deduct your home mortgage, your taxes. Um, you don't deduct charitable contributions. I mean, you still make them. You just put this number down. And for a lot of retired people, they don't have enough deductions to exceed this. I mean, if you had 50,000 in deductions, then you'd put the 50,000 down instead of the 25,9 plus the extra. I mean, so if your deductions exceed that, if you're very wealthy, you have a lot of income, well, this isn't that much for you. But what people don't realize is the couple that only has six, seven, eight thousand dollars in deductions that they're a whole lot better off putting down the twenty eight, twenty nine thousand dollars because they're getting just like they had that much in deductions. That serves to reduce the amount of tax they're paying. So we want to take that into consideration. Um, all of this is from a planning perspective. We wanted people to see what the tax rates are, understand that we know what they are. We use this chart. And then what we're going to do for you is try to plan out your retirement to make your tax bill as low as possible so you can keep more of your money. So I'm Hans Scheil. And I'm Tom Griffith. And we thank you very much for listening. Thank you.